Hey guys, welcome back. Another harpoon hint for you guys as I'm testing out tomorrow, August 31st, skill piece. So the skill piece is gonna be an eight minute clock. You're gonna build to something heavy of one power snatch plus one overhead squat. You're then gonna rest two minutes. During that two minute rest, you're gonna take whatever you ended with in that eight minutes. You're gonna make 80% of that number. Then you're gonna do an EMOM of one power snatch, one overhead squat. And the next minute, one power snatch, two overhead squats. The next minute, one power snatch, three overhead squats. You're gonna continue to add one overhead squat every minute on the minute until failure. We're gonna cap it at <clears throat> 10 minutes. So hopefully we can get some good work in and uh, get deep into that EMOM. But a couple of things as I'm going through it, I want you to think about tomorrow. I'll show you what it looks like first, and then I'll go over three things I want you to think about as you approach this skill tomorrow. So barbells behind me, let's check it out. This is what the visual looks like of the power snatch plus overhead squat. So that right there is what the complex is. So the first eight minutes, you'll do one power snatch, one overhead squat. You continue to build in that fashion. Couple things, so three things I'm thinking about personally and that you should also think about tomorrow. It's gonna be first off, your footwork. So I hear you guys, I, I, I see your, your feet are moving. I want you guys to get an idea of why the footwork is so important, especially in a complex like this today. So the footwork, when I say the feet under your hips, the feet gotta start under your hips. Literally like you're standing up nice and tall. <clears throat> From standing up nice and tall, I'm standing right here, all right? You don't stand like this right, in public, so don't do it now. Stand under your hips. This is where you start. This is where you go ahead and grab the bar. Now when I do my power snatch, my feet are gonna move out to our squat stance, all right? My squat stance now is just outside my shoulders, where we back squat, front squat, overhead squat, all right? So the footwork tomorrow is important because if you start in that position under your hips, you do your power snatch and your feet move out to your squat stance, then you shouldn't have to move your feet at all. All you have to worry about at that point is squatting down, all right? So, looks like this, if I'm here, I hit my power snatch, my feet slide out, boom. My feet are in that position I need to be in, and all I'll do from here, stabilize overhead, squat down, stand up, okay? So think about that. Think about how that footwork is gonna start under your hips, and then it's gonna finish in that squat stance. So all you have to do is squat. You don't have to move or fiddle around with your feet. The second piece I want you to think about is gonna be that locked out position overhead. So you guys really do a great, great job of actually getting that bar overhead and showing me a good lockout position. But what happens is when you guys start to squat down, we think about the squat too much and then this gets the back burner and we start to bend the elbows a little bit as we squat down. As soon as we bend the elbows, all that weight that's over our head is boom, right here. You might feel the overhead squats a lot in your shoulders pinching in the front, pinching in the back because we're not locking out while maintaining that squat. We lock out, we press hard, 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 hard through the ceiling, our lats turn on, our upper back turns on, more muscles are helping you support that weight overhead than just these small guys on our shoulders, okay? So as you guys are squatting down, I don't want you to get lazy overhead, maintain that good locked out position. The third tip has to kind of do with the overhead squats because you gotta be doing quite a bit of them tomorrow. And that's gonna be what the wrists are doing. So sometimes you guys finish your overhead squats and you're like, ugh, T-Rex arms, right? <clears throat> T-Rex hands, I should say, wrists. Something to think about that might be a good visual for you, but it's gonna be almost creating a J-hook. So the J-hooks are what go into the rig, right? That support the barbell, those J-hooks you slide out, we try to measure up. If you think of your hand as a J-hook with that bar, so right here, bar would rest right here. This is the position I wanna be in. So I get a good angle right here. That's the position I want to hold up overhead. All right. So a lot of times we let that bar roll back into our fingers and creates this kind of extension of the wrist. And then we're going to try to hold this position for five, six, seven overhead squats. We're obviously going to start to feel something in the wrist. So creating a nice, firm, strong wrist is a J hook. This is still a good position. It's not going anywhere. The wrists are neutral. Okay. If I'm right here punching hard to the ceiling, that bar is not going anywhere. It's when I get back in my wrist and I really start to let that bar bend my wrist back as I press up, that's when I come into some issues. So taking my wrist, er, there's my J-hook, bar's gonna sit right here, wrap my hand around it, punch hard overhead, okay? So three things to think about. I'm working away through my eight minutes. Think about the footwork, 
All right, set yourself up for success in that overhead squat. Think about that locked out position. Let more muscle groups support that bar overhead. And then think about that wrist position to take away any of that wrist tenderness that you start to feel during overhead squats. Hope you guys enjoy this skill piece tomorrow. I'm anxious to see kind of how far we get in this EMOM. If you have any questions, concerns, let me know, but see you guys 